future. Uh, probably. Probably. Hey, when we came to talk to you last week, you had one idea of what you were doing in the secondary, and when we got that depth chart Tuesday, it was completely different. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep you guys on your toes and everything. No. So what is the... Right now, we're, we're, we're you know, right now we just we're looking at a couple different things. We might change it again. We had, uh, um, I think I'm trying to think it was uh, uh, Stroman might have went down with a hamstring. So we're just trying to look at some different people. We, you know, we looked at Chuck Clark. He's played a little safety today, but we're, you know, he's probably a number one kind of corner guy too. So we're just we're putting him there. We're looking at a couple guys at, at safety spot. Like we're looking at Riley a little bit now. At, at, uh, at our free and just we're toying around with some people back there finding out who what, where they may fit best you know for for our scheme and it allows us to get some other guys you know some other work too you know with uh, you know maybe at corner but we may move back depending on depending on uh, you know what our status is with the injuries and whatnot there but we're just looking at different people Tori and I talked about it uh, you know my biggest concern at free you know, Chuck would be a great free. You know, Torian really feels like we need him working at corner right now. Um, you know, we were looking at uh, Revis and Desmond Fry, but our free needs to be a guy that can run and run vertical a little bit, so that needs to be more of a corner type guy. So we're looking at Riley a little bit, you know, at that spot. And uh, so we'll see. You know, he's, uh, he's done a pretty good job the first couple of days. You said you wanted somebody more experienced in that safety spot. How well, do you decide it's, well, it's not as much experience as it is. That guy needs to be able to, because our safety's involved in coverage a lot more than like our rover is. And um, that's a guy that we match on number two a lot. And that's a slot receiver that has some speed. And that guy needs to be, you know, have some corner or, or speed type, uh, you know, uh, abilities. And uh, you know, I just, I was concerned about uh, Revis's and uh, Desmond's you know, long speed, you know, and just stretching us a little bit with that. And and those guys have been good rovers for us in the past. Uh, you know, we ask those guys to be run fit guys more so than our safety in most instances. And, uh, and so we're just trying to get our best pieces to the puzzle and, and, and what fits the positions. With Kendall and Brandon out, is that just going to be kind of a, a rotating thing back there? Yeah, probably spring? a little bit. You know, I mean, Chuck's playing corner he's playing safety and eventually he might be our starting nickel i don't know you know we're going to look at mook reynolds you know a little bit uh, you know he's working at corner right now we haven't started with our nickel package yet but uh, we're going to look at him you know as our nickel package so then you want a first corner and that's probably where chuck's going to be you know so we're just kind of trying to fit what's what's going to be best for us to compete this spring and, and then also get guys in a position that we think will play and uh, you know get them reps at that spot as much as possible Looked like Nijman was, I think, he weighed in 265 uh, coming into spring. What have you seen out of him so far? Um, it sounds you like know, he's very raw. Quick. He's a very raw guy. I mean, a lot of abilities. He's been in day one, or this is day two, you know, and uh, you see some things, but he's a still he's a long way away from just, <coughs> you know, you expect him to be day two. I mean, new terminology, new scheme, you know, and just. Uh, uh, he's probably he's where we think he is, probably. You know, I'm going to evaluate him. I mean, obviously. I think his mind's tying up his feet a little bit right now, I would say. You know, we're only in day two, and we're not going to slow down with our installation or anything. You know, But at the same time, we're just, you know, we run a defense to run a defense. We're not trying to scheme our offense, but we just want to see the guys and their footwork and, and all those kind of things as we go along through the spring. And just trying to see if we can get him exposed and get to evaluate him, but exposed to our defense, but be able to evaluate him too. You know, like when we're playing base technique or when we're doing some kind of line movements and those type of things. So we can evaluate so he can see himself, you know, he can evaluate himself and then we can improve from it, you know, and then we can see if he can, you know, how he takes coaching and all those things. I mean, there's a process to it. So. I know it's not the, the deepest group it in, but do you like the variety there? It seems like Nigel's um, a big guy, Kine's kind of a speed guy. And yeah, I mean, you know, you like it when they're playing well. That's, that's when you like the variety, you know. Um, but, I, you know, right now, you know, Daddy's playing really well. The guy that's so far the first couple days is playing much faster and with a lot more confidence and, and is uh, Seth Dooley. You know, Melvin gives us something with some speed, and he's done some nice things. Um, you know, uh, obviously we're working Yash in there, and uh, um, you know, and he's we're, we're just going to make progress day to day with him and give him good evaluation. And then uh, Jeremy Haynes is a guy that's a solid guy that uh, um, you know uh, I trust. He played on teams last year, and you know he's kind of you know that 
fourth or fifth guy, depending on where we, we fall right there. So, How big a jump are you expecting out of Ricky Walker this year? I mean, he was you so know, close last yeah, year. Yeah, I'm expecting big things from Ricky. Uh, you know, he's going to get a lot of work in there. You know, obviously with uh, Luther and Corey out, um, you know, we have some experience really because, uh, you know, Woody and Nigel, uh, you know, both played a lot of snaps last year and played really well. Uh, Ricky, you know, did some really good things last fall, but he was also was a freshman and, you know, did some freshman things. And we're hoping he'll take that next step. Experience is the best teacher. And, you know, hoping him hearing things uh, from last year and hearing them again and doing them again that, you know, expecting big things. But we're also, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I, I liked what I've seen from uh, um, um, uh, Vinny Mahota this first uh, couple of days. And, you know, Steve Sobchak's shown a couple of little things. So uh, I, I like that group right there. What makes Ricky, I mean, he was such a prospect coming in. Well, what makes him a guy that you think can be successful? Well, you know, he's got a big wide tail, you know. I mean, you like those guys that are, you know, can get off on the ball. He's got good quickness. He can, you know, dent the line of scrimmage. He's athletic and can run so he can flatten out down the line of scrimmage. I, th I think he's got some quickness to be able to rush the passer. But he's, you know, he's a he's a big kid that can, you know, dent the line of scrimmage and, and uh, very explosive guy. And that's the one thing that, uh, you know, we really noticed last year. He's got a good football IQ. For him to come in and play right away as a freshman, I think, is a compliment to him and his, his football IQ. What's your initial take on Carson Lydon? Where is he at as a true freshman? Uh, eh, he's, he's about like Nijman, you know. He's... Uh, He's learning new things. The game's a lot faster than what it was. And, you know, you're coming from Florida, you know, and everybody thinks, oh, Florida's great football, and it is. But the, the speed at this level is, you know, and plus is, you know, the mind tying up his feet a little bit, uh, a little bit all over the place. But, uh, uh, you know, I like what the kid's all about, and, you know, it's day two. So uh, he's a good effort kid. He's got to learn to play the game at a high level. And, uh, but it, that's, that's what we're practicing for. So. You get a chance to see McMillan. Uh, as a scout back, what, mm -hmm. what did you say? Anything stand out about him? Uh, yeah, I tell you, Trayvon's got a lot of abilities. I mean, uh, I recruited the guy. He was a quarterback, uh, extremely explosive athlete. Um, the you know you saw him get better. I mean, he's used to handing the ball off rather than getting a handoff. You know, that was probably that's the biggest adjustment he probably had to make. I mean, running is kind of a natural thing, and where you fit, and you know where the play's directed, and that type of thing. But learning to receive a handoff. You know, that, you know, that may be a little, that's not as easy maybe as you, you think probably, you know, when you've been handing it off for years. And then the, probably the biggest thing for him was just, again, terminology, protections. He's never had to be involved in blocking and those type of things. So, but I tell you, the kid's got a lot of upside. He's a tr very explosive athlete with the ball in his hand. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to try to, you know, utilize those and maximize those talents. Awesome. Um, you start by Trayvon McMillan is a guy that you talked about in the offseason and, and what you might hope to get out of him. Give us a scouting report. What does he do and what do you think he can add? Uh, he did a great job today. Uh, he's a guy with a lot of talent. He's got speed. Uh, he's never played running back. He's you know, obviously been a quarterback all his life, but uh, he's got a lot of natural instincts and ability for a guy that hasn't played the position. Uh, he's learning. Uh, but again, you can't coach speed. You can't coach uh, the ability, and the vision that he has. And uh, he's got a long way to go. But you saw some things today on the practice field that you go, that's what we needed. It gives us a whole different element to our offense, uh, with having a back with that type of speed. So um, that was good to see today. It was good to see him uh, run around the edge. It was good to see him take the ball inside and naturally cut the way that you're supposed to. Uh, he's got, just like I said, he's got natural vision for a guy that hasn't played the position. When we were watching you guys yesterday, you had some drill where the whole team would run out from the side, line up, run a play, go to the end zone, and, and run off. And yeah. I think you stopped them a couple times because the receiver was maybe a, a yard off the yeah. hash or something like that. Do you feel like you had to set the tone for the spring and, and kind of There's drill that? We, um, we watch our defense, and um, I got great respect for, obviously, our defense. And uh, you watch how they start practice. Uh, they do a pursuit drill, and there's guys flying around. Uh, like no other. And uh, just like I said, our, our mindset is we've got to be the, the the team that plays full speed all the time, the guy, the team that's relentless and tough whenever things get hard. Um, we got to reduce the turnovers. 
we got to execute better, and um, we can if we consistently play hard, tough, and fast, and don't turn the ball over, we're going to win. And uh, we've we failed in uh, at times in both areas, and I've got uh, for the first time, uh, like I've said in many interviews, um, you see the I, uh, we see the light is at the end of the tunnel finally as a staff. And there's been a tunnel's been dark. And, and fighting through to get to where we want to be, and we see it, and uh, it's exciting to see. Our guys have bought in 100%. Uh, they're trying to hold each other accountable, and uh, we're in March, I get that, but I feel for the first time we're, there's light at the end of the tunnel. With how young you guys were last year, is that something you would have let go in the past and, and not made them start over? Is this a more attention to no, detail? No, it's, it's time. Um, you know, you were... Aaron Moorhead last year was trying to get. We were we were going to play three. We were originally going to try to play three freshman wideouts. We we got to two, and um, we were just trying to get them on the field and get them where to go. And uh, I did the same thing with the quarterback. There was fresh new faces in the offensive line, and um, now it's time to get the details right. It's time to play really really hard. It's time to get on the right number, Cam, and drive your feet and block the perimeter the way that we're supposed to block. It's time for Bucky Hodges, believe it or not, and everyone says how great he is in this. It's time for him to take over and, 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 and pay attention to the details. If we do that, we've got a chance. And uh, so we're making it a huge, huge uh, uh, emphasis to play really hard, understand the details, and do your job the way you're supposed to do it. You Good. mentioned three receivers. I assume Bradshaw could have been one of those. Could have been one of them. What do you think of him this spring? What do you need to see from him? Um, I, it's too early right now. Uh, for me to give you a full evaluation on him, that's that's not right. That's unfair. Um, what would you like to see from him? I'd spring? like to see him... Uh, Kind of like where Cam and Isaiah were at the end of spring or at the end of training camp. I want to see them, him at that spot and then really have a great summer and a great training camp to try to catch up to the, uh, the two older guys that played. Or excuse me, <laughs> call them older guys, the two guys that played. So that's what we'd love to see. We need to, just like I said, and I think I mentioned this to you, Andy, we have to get people in that room to step up and play. What we did to Isaiah Ford was completely not right played 80 some odd plays as a true freshman, that's not right. You've got to get him off the field. You can't play full speed and, and play 80 plays. So we need, uh, we need guys to step up in that, at that position and get uh, those two older, or older guys, my goodness, I can't believe I'm saying that. Those two uh, guys that played off the field. We've got to get them off the field. We've got to give them a break. Can you tell us anything about why Carlos Parker didn't come back? That's, that's coaches, 100% a coach's deal. What were you? I mean, how does that affect you? Can yeah, well, heck, I you? thought, you know, not to talk about a guy that's not here, but I thought Carlos was it was getting there, but a C coach with that one. How about your situation at center and how crucial was it this spring to get that nailed down? We got to. Um, we're, still in, we're still in shorts right now. Uh, so we'll see, uh, we'll see when we get pads on. There, there's, you know, Colt's been rotating there. Um, we'll see where we go. I mean, that's a, that'll be a great question to ask and probably about practice 10. Is that something, though, that Michael, you know, when the, the work they do in the offseason when it's just quarterbacks and the players are in charge, does he get into a rhythm with the center at that point? Did he <laughs> is that, that beautiful building right there <laughs> gets built? You're darn right. You know, we're just – that's why we need that thing built, you know, so they can go out there and – um, at times you you feel like you're 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 running against the clock because for three months or excuse me February first those guys should be throwing and on a throwing program well we can't throw here in February there's nowhere to throw in February so the, what we've done here as an administration getting that building and what all the people did to get us the money to get that building that is crucial in my opinion we could have a year round program throw year round. Uh, that's where the leadership's built because I, we can't be there. That building is crucial for our success, and uh, I'm so happy that we got it. So did that not then happen? No, this absolutely. Was, heck, the first time that we, it's like a pitcher showing up on day one and throwing a ball. I mean, it's not right. So that building's really going to be really, really helpful at the end of the day. Had you been thinking about Redmond at tackle for a while? Um, we we're, we're trying to figure out where he fits right now. Um, he's done a great job putting on weight. He's strong. He's athletic. 
that's probably another one, Andy. Day 10, you know, I can't give you an answer one way or the other right now. So what did you uh, learn last year while redshirting, and, and how far along are you now two days into spring ball? Um, you know, I learned a lot last year from going against our first defense every practice. Um, it kind of it it gave me something to look forward to this spring. So, you know, it's kind of like an ordinary look. And I'm kind of used to seeing it from last year. How excited are you that, I mean, with the way things shook out on this roster, that there's a, a real opportunity, obviously, for some guys at wide receiver. How eager are you to take advantage of that? I mean, anybody will be eager, but, you know, we have a lot of great receivers, and, you know, it's up to the coaches. But as of me, I really can't speak on me because it's kind of too early, but I do look to go on the field this year. Do you feel any pressure, though, with, with some of the guys that left? I mean, there's obviously a need for somebody to step up. Coach Luffer was just talking about that. I mean, yeah, it's – I'm going to be pressure on anybody. You know, if they're looking for you to step up, then, I mean, that's what you have to do and to fulfill that role. Did you learn anything in particular from Ford and Phillips and, and the success they had early? Did you, anything from those guys that stands out to you? Um, yeah, learn a lot from them. Like, if, I, if it's something I don't know with the playbook, I'll go ask them because, you know, those guys played early last year, and, of course, they know more than I do. So I ask them if I need help with anything. It sounds like you might have had a chance to play last year. You have a hamstring or something in, in August? What was it? Yeah, um, early early, early camp last year, I, had, um, I pulled my hammy, and, you know, it really kind of set me back a little bit. Is that a little frustrating? I mean, that you see Isaiah and Cam get out there in your same class, and they're playing right away, and they're starting right away. You know, um, yeah, it was frustrating, but at the same time, um, you know, those guys, they're really great guys, and, you know, it's kind of I was kind of happy to see what they achieved over the season, so, you know. You look a lot bigger than you were when you enrolled. How much did you put on since yeah, last year? Um, when I came in, I was maybe like 174. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm weighing like 191. Okay. Yeah, so. Could you be like a slot guy? I mean, are they looking at you in that kind of role? Yeah, um, I work mostly slot. You know, I mean, I could play outside, but um, my major role is probably slot. They like to throw the ball around a lot at Oscar Smith, where you came from. Uh, did, that, did that help you get more prepared early as a college player, playing an offense like that? Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, you know, back at um, – Oscar Smith, you know, we really, really threw the ball, I mean, majority of the game. So um, coming here and, you know, looking for passes, you know, it's kind of to be expected. Mm -hmm. Um, how's everything been going so far with you guys? This, I know it's the second day. Um, just in a hole or just like individual? Yeah, that's all. Um, well, I think um, I think we're headed to like the right um, direction with the, with the team and stuff. Like, just gotta get some stuff going together. Like, get little things mixed up, and uh, I think we should be good. What are some things individually that you're you're focusing on getting better? Oh, I'm um, coming off the ball and uh, usually like using my left foot because I'm I'm a right defensive end now, so I put my left hand down. Like in high school and at Fork Union, I had my right hand down, so then like I had to alternate my my foot in. You guys have some injuries there. Is it nice to be able to get in the mix and while some of the, your teammates are out? Um. Well, yeah, I do want to get. I do want my teammates to be healthy on coming back. But uh, yeah, it's been like a good experience for now. Like you know, coming in and like, getting some reps at defense. When did Virginia Tech kind of come out of your radar? When did they? Come yeah, out? during the whole recruiting process. Um, it actually started off like when I went to Fork Union. Um, like I went in there, but like a couple of offers, and then like one day they just called me up and was like, "Yeah, we'd we like to offer you." And I was kind of like excited, and I was like. Okay, so I just took it, you know, but that's when I went to Fort Union. Do you feel like your recruiting kind of heated up there? I mean, were you getting this much interest when um, you were coming out of high school? Or? No, not really. My high school uh, wasn't really the best at sports, but um, yeah, I was pretty much the biggest guy there. You were like a shot putter in high school, right? Yeah, I was a okay. shot putter. How'd you get to Fort Union? Describe that process. Oh, um, well, like, my grades weren't where they were supposed to be, and my SAT score was, like, kind of, like, in the middle of the balance. I was really on the brink of, like, you know, being qualified mm -hmm. to get a scholarship, so I just went there for a semester. Mm -hmm. 
I think people see your size and your reach and everything like that. They think he, he might be a good offensive tackle. Are you you really want to play defensive end? Does it oh, yeah, like? I do want to play defensive end really bad. Yeah, like my coach in high school like always had me there, and uh, he think I can really be good there. And, you know, um, I feel like playing that position for me is, like, challenging, but, like, I feel like I'm up for the challenge for that. You know what I mean? Like, in a way, like, um, like there's so much to learn there, but, like, I'm willing to learn it. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. I think when you initially weighed in when you got here, it was 277. Yeah. They listed yeah. you out at like 265. Or you slipped yeah, like down a little bit? 263, yeah, I did. Was that a, a focus of yours? I mean, did you feel like you had to do that to, to um, be effective at that position? I mean, or is it just going through Gentry's offseason? Yeah, just going through Gentry's offseason, yeah. And yeah, that's what happened. It just slimmed down. I mean, I, I still eat the same, but it's just the workouts and the calorie balance and stuff. So, yeah, I guess I burned more calories now than I did before. Are there any other? Um, I, I'm kind of the same size, to be honest. I, I just got a lot stronger. What did you What did you weigh when you got here? Um, 190. And is that about where you are? It's about 200 right now. So, so just a little bit more. A little bit more. Sounds good. Thanks very much. Thank you. So uh, after redshirting, uh, it's the first time you've ever played tailback, right? Um, how was the adjustment period, and where do you feel like you are right now as a player? Uh, the adjustment period went well. I, I feel like I'm a. Um, you know, technique-wise, I'm getting a lot better at tailback, you know, blocking and everything, and running comes pretty natural, so it's a good adjustment so far. At this point, you know, you're playing football, but you're not really playing football because you're shorts. Uh, but uh, are you ready to put the pads on at this point? I mean, yeah, just definitely. show what you can do? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, describe the, the depth chart battle there. Uh, JC finished last season strong. Trey was a starter two years ago. Uh, how do you, how's everybody fitting in right now? How's, how's the battle going? Um, it's going pretty well. I, I just I don't worry about that. I just try to go out there and execute as hard as I can and practice and as hard as I can and show the coaches what I can do. You feel like you can help on special teams too, like as a kickoff returner? Yeah, definitely. Have, have they talked to you about possibly playing that role? Uh, last year they did. They haven't really mentioned it yet since we haven't established that yet, but I'm pretty sure I'll be on a kickoff return. All right, thanks.